How are you doing today? Good, good. I'm on like you're my seventh meeting this afternoon. It's been back to back. Oh my um, goodness, are you tired already? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, 5 p.m. here, so kind of, but I still have one more meeting after you, so it's Monday. Wow. It's probably our Monday here. <laughs> <laughs> more power to you. All right, um, I'm going to start off this show. I'm just uh, stretching right now. As you can tell, I'm very comfortable in my hoodie. Um, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good morning, yes, it is the start of the morning here in Chicago. It is 4.03. Thank you so much for having me here on this time. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. So, yeah, we're just we're just going to knock this out of the park because I have to go on a commute in a bit, which is about an hour from now. So we're, we're going to make this good. FM. Hello, everyone. My guest on the 2400 Block Podcast for this Monday morning is, is this how you say your name, Leanne Light Lacaba? Leanne. More of a Y in between my Lee and Anne, but yeah. <laughs> okay, Leanne. Okay, got it. And you are the CEO and co founder of, is that 2XU or 2 by you? 2XU. 2XU. Okay. Thank you for correcting me. And she's also an international public speaker, book author, and a coaching expert uh, when it comes to hiring the virtual assistant as well as being one. Now, thanks, Leanne, for taking the time to join me. It is an honor to finally meet you. And now this marks the first time I've ever gotten up this early in the morning as well as having that chance to interview a guest who's from another country. And, makes, and this is even special. He comes from the motherland, the Philippines, this beautiful nation, by the way, with so many wonderful, happy people. And a special hello to the viewers and listeners over there, including my good friend, Helen, who's my biggest fan. So, maraming salamat to the Kababayans. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's the only time you'll hear me speaking Tagalog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to come up with a series of questions here I'd like to ask you. I call this the perspective feature. It's a way for people to get to know uh, individuals and personalities like yourself. Mm -hmm. Shoot. All right. <laughs> here we go. All right, from what I've read, you accomplish a lot, being it that you're only in your mid-20s. So congratulations on your past achievements as well as your latest ones. If any, take us back to your childhood. What was it like growing up? So growing up, I'm the eldest of four. So that's kind of like the first ever leadership role that I got into was <laughs> like uh, the typical uh, Asian eldest kid is like responsible for everything in the house. You're basically the second hand uh, to your mom, basically. So that's how kind of that's kind of the background for me is like I grew up helping take care of my siblings um, with my mom on a full time job and my dad. Typical also Filipino job of went overseas. Um, we only see him once or twice a year. Uh, so I was very much, my mom would depend on me on a lot of things. So uh, that's kind of how it was growing up for me. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, my dad as well. He was uh, going overseas, life in the Navy, gone six months, sometimes a year. So yeah, I know mm -hmm. the feeling about that one. So uh, it was just me, my siblings, and then we had uh, typical here in, in the Philippines, so we'll have basically yayas or um, yeah. <laughs> what's the other term uh, in English? It's not really, a, because they're not really a maid maid. It's like they help take care of us grow up, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what events in your life led you to your success? 
So multiple things. So uh, the first part was the first time that I found out that you can get paid working online. That was the most, uh -huh. the first mind blowing thing for me. I was 15 years old. I was, I had this blog that I was doing uh, and one of the people that I made friends with um, on a Facebook group, they're like, hey, I'm actually looking for a writer. And I'm like, I have no idea how to like do <laughs> work from home. I was 2011. I really remember that because I was about to go into college. Uh, so it was crazy for me to, that was the first like, oh, you can do this. Like with both my parents as examples, my dad can only work overseas. My mom only working in office, like working remotely was such an alien thing. Um, but that was uh -huh. the first like entrance or sniff of addiction of working anywhere for me. Um, but then when I was 18 years old, uh, I went through Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda, which was the category five storm that went through our um, hometown in Tacloban, where uh, water came into our house. And as the eldest oh, no. uh, kid, I was uh -huh. taking care of everyone else. I had my siblings up the stairs. Both my parents weren't home. Uh, and my, I had a, my 65 year old grandma. Um, and as everyone was safe uh, upstairs, I went back into our kitchen to grab more food because we didn't know how long the flood was going to be as the water started rising up to my uh, chin. I was like, oh, OK, this might be it for me. Um, and I had the people always say your life flashed before your eyes before you right before you died. Mine flashed uh -huh. forward. Mine flashed forward in the path that my mom and I have set where the usual Asian kid where you're either you're a doctor, a lawyer, accountant. My mom cho chose lawyer for me. Um, and I saw that life. I saw the path that my mom and I made and I hated it. I still remember that feeling up to this day. I still go back to that whenever I like I'm doubting myself of where I am. I go back to that feeling of like you could have gone onto this path that you were in life versus the, the life that you have now. Um, so I made a promise to myself of like, hey, if I survive this, I'm going to change my whole life. And I literally did because within six months, I dropped out of college, um, found a job in a different city because my PTSD, anxiety and depression was too much in the city oh. that I grew up in. Um, and then basically found myself a job working remotely as a book as a, a book editor for a while and then worked my way up to become CEO of that startup, then started to XU three years later as my own business and kind of just been doing this ever since. Wow, that is an amazing uh, story there. Real life story. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a very unique one of like whenever people ask me, like, what's your origin story? I'm like, do I have a story for you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, although traumatizing, I mean, that was like the great motivator for you that you just have to keep on going. Yeah. And that you yeah. do have this purpose in your life. Oh, yeah. I see you also take on other roles. You're, you're a content creator with your own YouTube channel. You're also this international public speaker and a coach of your own brand, remotely training your own employees. I mean, you are an unstoppable force. I mean, how do you do it? Um, well, it did start from that survivor mindset. When I wanted, when I, when I wanted to start my own business, I was like, uh, I wanted to help create jobs for Filipinos working from home. So they had the same mm -hmm. choice that I had where, because it used to be like oh, either work overseas or work in an office. I'm like, I want to create like a third path and I want to pave that path um, with being able to work from home. So 2XU kind of came as almost a very natural state to go into because um, virtual assistance is like one of the roles where once you step into it, you can choose a lot of different paths. Um, so it was perfect for people who wanted to get started. Um, and then for me, like I, how I'm currently doing it right now is it's all honestly my assistant. <laughs> That's kind of, I'm the most, I'm the biggest testimony for my own business uh, because she helps me like manage like, you know, the video editors working on my YouTube video. She helps me like track projects across my business. She helps me um, work with a lot of our clients. She's the one who sends emails. Anyone who's, you've, you've also basically technically already spoke with my assistant because she's the one who responds to my emails. So anything oh, okay. um, communications wise, my calendar wise, scheduling wise, she helps take care. So I can then focus on the right things inside of my business. So it's kind of on the question of how I'm able to do it. It's that also the uh, just the sheer craziness of being an entrepreneur. That's <laughs> also one part of it for sure. <laughs> I'm sure uh, I know you juggle a whole lot over there, but I'm sure you just take, you know, steps one at a time, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, actually, that led me on to my next question here. I was about to say, take us through the day on what it is like being in your shoes. Uh, depending on the day. So like, for example, on Mondays, it's 
uh, every single day for me looks a little bit different just because on Mondays, it's all admin uh -huh. meetings. It's all me meeting with everyone else, making sure they're on track, you know, uh, and then it somewhere in between there, I record the YouTube video that's going to come out, you know, five days from now. So I'm always recording ahead. Uh, and then somewhere in there also is like writing the writing the book that I'm supposed to finish six months ago. So it's a it's a interesting mix of like, I know the, the different priorities and they're always shifting, but it's uh, mostly meetings and getting things done. That's kind of how how my day usually looks like. Well, that's good. You, you, you make good use of your time. Uh, let me let me ask you this. I was back in the day. I used to have a planner. Do you still use a planner? Or do you just use mainly your phone? I use Notion for myself. So at the beginning oh, of the okay. week, I'll put in priorities. What are the things that I shortlist? Basic is things I want to make sure I get done that week. Uh, then I, every day I shortlist what I'm supposed to be doing that day. And then that's how I kind of operate. Oh, OK. Good move there. Yeah. Uh, all right. Who are your influences, role models in your life? Uh, well, the first ever role model I ever had, which is uh, timing because it's almost Mother's Day, is of course my mom. Like my mom was a hustler, true and true. She raised four kids basically on her own because my dad uh, working overseas. Uh, and then she also, on, you know, on top of her own already um, full time office job, she was taking also speaking gigs. She was uh, getting paid for doing like events and putting things up together or selling things. So a lot of my own personality and the way how I see and handle things is because I saw my mom at full capacity. Um, and then well, about almost two years ago now, um, actually two years to Saturday, she would have uh, passed away for about two years because of uh, she sadly passed away through cancer two years ago. Oh. Um, but because of who she is, I literally went on a speaking event last Saturday and one of those speakers just knew my mom just out of like randomly oh, like, wow. oh, yeah, I know your mom. But because that was the impact and the life that she led that anywhere, even people that I don't know knew my mom. That's why they know me. So that's oh. kind of that's why she's like my main role model. Other than that, other mentors that I have is I have my co-founder, Tom, who when I moved here when I was 18 years old, right, right after a super typhoon, he was the one who like taught me entrepreneurship, taught me how to think as a leader and as an entrepreneur. Um, and of course, I have like the bajillion of books that I've studied over the years because I'm a big bookworm. Um, and a lot of, the, of course, the the uh, people that I've consumed, like Gary Vaynerchuk or I've consumed um, Simon Sinek. Brene Brown, so many amazing people that I um, tip my hat off to, of like people that I listen to constantly. That is so awesome, especially your I'm mom. Very blessed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leanne. I have to be real and honest here. You know, I heard this one word on a TV news lately, but I know it has something to do with your job industry. Um, however, I don't know what a clue. Uh, I don't have a clue what this uh, word is. But uh, what is Chat GBT? And, and what does it do? <laughs> I'm really clueless here. <laughs> uh, you, you're my perfect audience. Then. So chat GPT, um, at the very core of it is imagine like when you're going through customer support, basically in the last couple of years, you go to like chatting them on Facebook, chatting them on uh, on like their website, for example, those are automated replies, but that's a oh, really okay. good example of what a chat bot is. It, it already has automated replies. Chat GPT though, has taken all of the information from the internet in the last, uh, until 2021, basically it's kind of frozen. They're currently updating it um, and came out with, it's now just the ultimate chat AI. So almost anything that you wanna know, anything you need to learn, as long as you know how to write the right prompts, you can get it. So for example, for me, like in the last 90 days or almost six months now actually, uh, of my YouTube content, my scripts, my Facebook post, LinkedIn posts, Instagram, almost everything has been written by ChatGPT. Um, and I've, I've basically taught it how to write in my voice, how to write like my brain. Um, wow. I credit all of that with uh, one of the people that I look up to, his name's Jeff Hunter. He came up with a course on how to create your own persona with AI. Um, and then beyond that, like a lot of our all of our assistants instead of 2XU use ChatGPT to make their own lives a little bit more uh, just easy. So it's basically like talking to an actual human, except this human knows almost everything. But oh, you also have to keep in mind that it's kind of like a three-year-old toddler that will act like it knows everything, but you have to give it mm -hmm. the specific questions to be able to wow. get the thing that you want. Wow. That, that's that's mind-blowing to me. I don't even know <laughs> nothing about it, I swear. <laughs> Hence why I've been... It heads away on my YouTube channel everywhere else. I've just been talking about ChatGPT because uh -huh. so many people are like literally this morning uh, in one of like the, the major news 
um, newspaper here in the Philippines. It was like the uh, the AI um, Armageddon, something like, you know, we lose jobs to AI. Uh, and in reality, it will happen, but it's up to you if you're going to let it happen to you. So it's then learning how to do it, learning how to utilize it. So that's kind of been a lot of my passion in the last six months is teaching people how to do it so they don't have to be afraid of it. Wow. And just waiting a few years from now, it's going to be even more advanced. Mm -hmm. This is all, this is kind of the, the crappiest that chat GPT <laughs> will get because it will just keep getting better. So how many years, uh, you know, about, uh, chat GPT and other, all this technical stuff. Um, well, chat GPT just came out to the public November, mm -hmm. uh, last year, but it's been kind oh. of been developed in the last three years or four years longer than that. Um, if I remember right. Um, but it's been to the public so then people can test it out, can play with it, um, basically since November of 2022. Oh, okay. Because I've been hearing it lately in the news, and then I watched some of your uh, your videos were mentioning chat GPT, and that was the, the perfect time to ask you a question right now. Mm -hmm. So how awesome is that asking to you uh, right now? <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Like I said, it's, it's uh, some, something a lot of people are scared about, but there's nothing really to be scared about as long as you educate yourself on how you can use it. All right. I'm sure this is going to motivate the young listeners out there, especially those that are fresh out of high school or college. What is the best advice that you can give for one to make it successful in this world? Keep learning. That's always like so many people think of learning as as what they do in, in school, basically, of like the textbook, there's a quiz, so on and so forth. But in reality, uh, when you're out and about and trying to succeed and trying to make your own path, it's learning from yourself, from your mistakes, from the things you've done in the past that didn't really work. It's also learning from mentors, from books and courses. That's the biggest thing that I, I give credit to is the fact that I had amazing mentors growing up and also from the books that I consume and inhale basically on a daily basis. Listening to podcasts just like this one is a really good example because you could be doing other things, but you're learning and you're feeding your brain with the good stuff rather than feeding yourself with the fear and everything else that's usually on the news. So keep learning is kind of the best thing that you could ever do for yourself because it's one of the ways where you can get ahead um, on everyone else who's not learning. Yeah. yeah, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's fundamental in life, everyone. You just learn things as you go, mm -hmm. you know, and you, and you get better at it, and you don't repeat the same mistakes. Exactly. I mean, I saw your video, and I see you have, like, tons of books in the background. What do you consider your favorite books? Oh, such a difficult question to ask for a book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on This Is, it's always going to be E-Myth by Michael Gerber. That's been the first book that kind of, uh, I thought I was just going to be an, an employee most of my life, even though I've been doing freelancing and kind of already been in business. But mm -hmm. uh, E-Myth by Michael Gerber was one of the first books like, oh, that's how I can think about it. Um, on leadership, it's There to Lead by Brene Brown. Um, and also Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek, those two books, and One Minute Manager by Ken Blanchard. I'm so surprised I can remember all of the authors' <laughs> names as well. Um, and also for fun, like I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I literally have it tattooed on my arm. <laughs> oh. um, and that's just my fiction uh, guilty pleasure I can always go back to. Uh-huh. That's great. That's great. I have a couple of books here behind me, but um, one of them is actually one. Let me show you one of them. Yeah. It's time to do some show and tell here. <laughs> actually one of my uh podcasting partners i know he's gonna be mad at me when i do this but um he made a book um not it was just like something he wanted to do in life but one of his uh things on his bucket list his name is dan and he's my podcasting partner he made a book called the common sense uh or from the common man it's just like a hmm. an advice book to to the men out there but that's, that's perfect that's uh, needed. I know he's going to be mad for me for, 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 for doing that the umpteenth time now. <laughs> it's, it's a promo. Yeah. And I'm sure you, you may have seen the movie Serendipity. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that movie Seren Serendipity? I, one of my favorite classics. Awesome. And actually had the book. Look at that. <gasps> Love in the Time of oh, Cholera. Oh, nice. Exactly how it looked like. But Very the woman's nice. name is not up there. <laughs> Sarah's not on there. <laughs> no, Sarah's definitely not on there. <laughs> and here's another motivational book. This is uh, from a good friend of mine, Felice Cantatori. He wrote a book on uh, the Rocky Spirit. 
It's just nice. a way for uh, for everyone to uh, face through life's challenges, even with the odds against them, and win. So that's that was Love a good that. book here. And lastly, oh, actually, I have two more here. One of them is like sweetness. Uh, the enigmatic life of Walter Payton. He's like a, a hero Ooh. here in Chicago. He's a sports hero. He's a very mm -hmm. humble athlete. Uh, he didn't live. He didn't live that long. He died of, I think, kidney kidney failure. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's a great athlete, and he's always like adored. So, one of my heroes. Very cool. And I'm sure you'll come across this: the five love languages. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> I read it. <laughs> Always love a book. Ex uh, love a book exchange of recommendations yeah. because then that's more added to the list. <laughs> exactly. I love going to those bookstores that have like books or comic books or vinyl records and secondhand you know, video, the, the thrift video games, the thrift yeah. shops. Yep. There you go. Yep. I uh, every time that I go into one, for some reason, when I go out, I have four books with me. <laughs> the biggest oh. one that I had. Uh, I went to Thailand about a month and a half ago now and walked into mm -hmm. the secondhand bookstore and I'm like, oh no, I might have to add more baggage <laughs> to my plane <laughs> ticket. I was like looking around like, oh, and then I ended up with four books going home and I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's just like me going to a Costco, you know, buying only one thing. Next thing you know, I'll bring a whole cart full the of stuff thing, that I shouldn't yeah. have bought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's usually the case. Have you ever visited the USA? And if so, what is your favorite city? Did you capture any good memories there? Not yet. I do have, because I just need a good reason. Like I have a US visa, but I mm -hmm. I need a good enough reason. Like traveling there for tourism is not good enough for me. I want to go there because I've been invited to a speaking gig, something like that. Um, because then it's like more beyond just like the visiting and the place that I uh -huh. do want to visit with all my heart. And if it's all over my room, so I can't really show it on one just the one place. But the one place I want to visit is just New York. It's like my my haven um, as well. So it's kind of if I was able to go there, that that's that's where I'm heading up. <laughs> oh, that's great! And I hope you do consider Chicago, like maybe next yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, it's a great city. We have some wonderful Filipinos here. We even have our own seafood city. Oh, for sure. And we have I think three, that's... three Jollibees in the area too. <laughs> I think that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll, when I do get to the chance of visiting the U.S., I'll just have a list of like Filipino communities for each like state I can visit just so I can go there and just like mm -hmm. state hopping for Filipino food in the U.S. <laughs> I think that's what I'll do. <laughs> so you're, you're actually in Cebu City right now or somewhere mm -hmm. else? Cebu oh, City. Wow. I just came from uh, Manila. Actually, just last night. Um, just always moving around. Wow. Basically went through everything here. And I, I know I was trying to just go really fast because I know I have to go on that 5 a.m. commute this morning. <laughs> yeah, and this I, is I mean, fun. Yeah, I really appreciated your time, you know, being here and finally getting a chance to to meet you here virtually. Yes, yes. I'll let you know when I do stop by Chicago for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe we, we can have some Tapsalug or something. I hope we're oh, not that right. So I, I'm, I'm right very right bad with Tagalog speaking, so. Top, Tapsalug is right. Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> I right. am really not there when it comes to saying the accent right. I am <laughs> not there. It's all People good. People saying you're just terrible. I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't have said the word. You, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of there are a lot of Americans that I know here who still does ha, does not know like a lick of anything <laughs> just because they're a little <laughs> bit spoiled because everyone speaks English here anyway. Um, so you're not alone. You're even more opposite there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it when 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 Americans here just just say the food. You got you guys got pansit or panzit or you know lump lumpia. Like, lumpia, oh, wow. yeah, yep. I heard yeah. that one. Yep. <laughs> well, anyways, Leanne, I don't want to take too much of your time. I really appreciate you uh, being a part of this podcast today, and I learned so much about you through your own words. And all the best in your success always and it's truly uh, truly an honor to have you here today thank you so much very happy to be here <laughs>